people of the internet, my name is Johnny, welcome back to a Five Nights at Freddy's merchandise review and unboxing video. And as you can see, today we're going to be taking a look at U2's Help Wanted figures. These released back on December 29th at the tail end of 2023. And in classic U2's fashion, it took about half a year for them all to arrive, but... Whatever, at least they're all here. The release did also include a pin set, which I do not have on me. I can't remember if I actually ordered it or not, but it's a great pin set. It's got all the characters included here, Shadow Mangle, two Glitztrap pins, Dreadbear, Grim Foxy. There were no plushies released for this wave, so we're just gonna be taking a look at some figures today. Though I have also gotten in all of the FNAF Ruin figures in as well, so we will be reviewing those shortly too. And if you do want to take a look at some brand new U2's plushies, I did review the Ruin plushies over on my second channel. But to kick this video off, let's take a look at Dreadbear. Now before we crack into the figure itself, let us first appreciate the box they made for this Help Wanted wave. You've got the logo off to the side. Here on the back, you've got a look at Dreadbear. Now I will say, I'm not a big fan of the new U2 sleeves. Comparing him to a Banjo-Kazooie figure that I just have on hand at all times, don't worry about it. On the backs of the sleeves, they've added a window so you can see inside and actually look at the figure itself. So you know longer have to remove the sleeve and there's your window to see the figure. You can just see it here, though you can also still take off the sleeve if you want. But I don't know, I just find the new sleeves weird. I think they were trying to set themselves uh, apart from Funko Pops, which already have a very similar format to their boxes, but with these new sleeves, you can just see like the box art still of the of the full box. So while the new sleeves are fine, really, they're, they're harmless. I just don't really get the point of having them. I don't really like the slanted angle right here. My point being, they're fine. I just, I kind of prefer these. But taking a look at the box itself, can you believe Dreadbear is number 36? We've gotten so many FNAF U2's figures, it's actually kind of insane. Here's the box for Dreadbear. And you may notice a big difference between the prototype Dreadbear figure that MR Springs got and this final Dreadbear box is that the quotes are actually much, much different. Here on the side, you've got Danger Keep Out. On the back, you've got It's Alive, but lacking the necessary control module, namely the brain. So let's calibrate one. And then jumping ahead a little bit, we've got Welcome Back to Research and Development. Now, I actually have a pretty strong connection with this Dreadbear figure from YouTube because it was actually yours truly, me, who recommended they change the quotes on these boxes to actually fit more with Curse of Dreadbear because these are actual quotes from Dreadbear's DLC. The original quotes, I reached out to YouTube's and they just said, yeah, we kind of just made those up, so I was like, well, here are some better ones that I think fans will actually appreciate. So it's actually pretty cool to see something that I slightly contributed to on a uh, official FNAF merchandise, so that just makes me a little happy, a little giddy. But on the back, you've got Dreadbear looking at all of the monitors for Curse of Dreadbear, but now let's actually crack open this box once again. The figure itself coming in a very protective sleeve, and as you can see on the background, you've got the Help Wanted logo. Now, as much as I appreciate YouTube taking my feedback for the quotes for Dreadbear, his figure itself, I'm pretty disappointed with. Namely, the color. I'm not entirely sure why merch companies like making Dreadbear this really mucusy looking green. He's a lot more grayish brown as opposed to this <laughs> radioactive green. The details on him are pretty nice. He's missing a chunk out of his ear. I can't remember if it's this one or this one, but he's got those nasty looking yellow teeth. He's got a bit of his endo showing in his torso. Of course, the bolts on his head. Overall, it's a fine figure, but the color is just... <laughs> I don't know, it really throws me off. I don't know why merch companies make make him this color. Now you may notice this is the standard version of Dreadbear. There was a one out of six or one out of seven chance to get a glow in the dark figure. I only got one Dreadbear figure. I wasn't, you know, willing to spend another 30, 60 dollars to try my luck. I'm not too upset that I don't have the glow in the dark figure though. From what I've seen, it glows like insanely well. So maybe one day I'll try and track it down, but for now I'm pretty, that is not how that goes. For now, I'm just pretty satisfied with my normal Dreadbear figure. But sticking with Curse of Dreadbear, let's take a look at the second figure, Grim Foxy. I am the master of corn maze. I still hold the world record in that game. So when I heard that they were making a Grim Foxy figure, 
I was super excited. His side quote is just Foxy singing song, da da dum 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 da dum diddly dum. On the back, we've got some very amazing art of Grim Foxy in the corn maze. Here's a look at the figure, and then we have the full view of the figure number 37. And I will be skipping over all of these sleeves, mainly because they're just gonna be the same thing every time. On the inside quote, it's just more of Foxy singing. I suppose I'm not entirely sure what else they could have done for quotes, and there's that Help Wanted logo again. But this is actually my first time holding Grim Foxy in my hands, holding the figure in person. Much like all my other U2's orders, these just arrived in <laughs> the strangest of orders. I got like the first half of the Ruin Wave figures in, and then I got the first half of the Help Wanted figures, and then I got the rest of Ruin, but I was still missing the Mimic, and then I got these guys, then I got the Mimic, so... It's been all over the place. So Grim Foxy was actually one of the final ones to arrive, though I will say, I think U2s, recently they've been packing, at least with these two waves, figures in boxes of two. So like, I'll get one package that has two figures, which... Eh, oh my god, that's amazing. I really hope pretty soon in the future U2s allows figures to be grouped into like, one big order into one big box because having to pay for shipping for like each individual figure it's it's ridiculous but anyways here is grim foxy looking mighty fine actually a lot of detailing on this guy whole bunch of flames and fire poking out from his suit all of his endoskeleton showing in his legs his ears his terrifying claws they did a fantastic job on the scythe the only thing i'm a little mixed about on this figure is this patch of fire right here and actually looking pretty closely. I'm not sure if it's just a messy paint job on mine, but that eye, that U2's signature eye, it looks a bit wonky. But overall, I'm pretty pleased with Grim Foxy. Again, the detailing on this guy is freaking phenomenal. He's one of my favorite FNAF characters just because I enjoy Corn Maze so much. So I'm super, super happy that he actually has a figure. He looks fantastic. I guess I just had a lot to yap about with Dreadbear because I'm already ready to move on to Glitch Trap. Actually, let's move on to Shadow Mangle because I've got a bit more to yap about with Shadow Mangle. The most obvious thing being Shadow Mangle was released before the regular FNAF 2 Mangle, which we didn't get until the Withered Wave earlier this year, I think. So why they decided to do Shadow Mangle before the classic mangle absolutely baffles me especially because there are better character picks from help wanted i know they're memed on a lot but how funny would it be to have a u2's figure of the plush babies like that'd be awesome i'd love that the nightmare endo could have been cool i guess maybe they didn't want to do those characters because they haven't done regular circus baby or even any of the nightmares but like you weren't gonna release Mangle until a few months later, so why would you do Shadow Mangle? I don't know, it's it's just a very weird lineup. Overall, I don't hate the, sh the pick of Shadow Mangle. I actually quite like the design of the figure and the box. Something is in there. I don't, I don't know what that's from. I don't know if that's a Help Wanted quote. I know Mangle doesn't actually talk much or at all in Help Wanted. Quickly, repair the vent. Yeah. I, I don't think they say that, man. It seems like they're trying to go for some hand unit type dialogue, but like, again, there's already hand unit dialogue specifically for the vent repair minigame. So just use that. Just rip quotes from there. Don't, you know, you don't have to make up your own stuff. But anyways, enough complaining because this figure is amazing. It honestly just gets me super, super excited for the regular mangle. Like, look at the detail on this figure, man absolutely crazy and the colors absolutely phenomenal actually holding it and feeling all the different limbs you know not in a weird way in different parts of the mangle it doesn't come across in video just how cool this figure is like even though i was complaining man you should have done the plush babies that would have been hilarious and I, and definitely right up youtube's this alley of making weird characters that let's be honest here, aren't really that important into figures, like take Doug, for example. Like, that's a meme figure. You could have done the plush babies as your meme figure for this wave, but whatever. Yeah, just a overall fantastic, fantastic figure. The detailing, the colors, really, really eye-pleasing. And just makes me super, super excited for the regular Mangle figure, which I did order. I think I got all of the <laughs> FNAF 2 wave figures, so that's gonna be a big unbox unboxing video when they all come in. Again, just actually feeling an accurate model figure of the mangle in my hands it's so so surreal though so even though i'm complaining 
you twos, you, two thumbs up. And then the final figure for today is going to be Glitch Trap, the one and only. As always, the box is exactly the same, though I do still really appreciate the detail and care put into the sleeves and the boxes. I think in past FNAF waves, you twos just reuse the same box design for every FNAF figure, but luckily they're switching it up, and I'm really, really glad they are because, again, this looks great. The Ruin figures look great as well for their boxes. Oh, this guy's already trying to open himself up anyways here is glitch trap Ooh, creepy creepy design on the back i always come back and i did see this quote earlier let me out so i do like that they've added some purple glitching to the box design that's a nice touch and also these quotes are scrapped pieces of dialogue either that or they're like really quiet in the final game. Uh, these are pieces of dialogue from the glitch trap monster in the princess quest game. Actually, some good quotes for once in this, in this help wanted wave besides the dreadbear ones, which luckily I had to step in and fix. But all joking aside, amazing detailing on glitch traps box. Now let's actually get the sucker out. Let's let him out. But interestingly enough, glitch trap is the only one that comes with a stand. There you go. So it seems that because he's probably leaning forward so much with his big old head, maybe he doesn't stand up too well without the stand, but I always appreciate when they do add the stands. And overall, just a really, really nice figure. The only thing that kind of rubs me the wrong way with this figure are the giant uh, black stitches on the ears. I can't remember exactly how noticeable those stitches are on the actual glitch trap ears on the suit, but... Uh, these just stick out like a sore thumb. And then also the eye design is a bit weird how the eyes are pure yellow on the black eyes. u likes to go back and forth, not even just with the FNAF brand, but like kind of all of their figures and sometimes plushies as well, where they'll either have like a black or white background and then have the eyes there, or they'll have just the color of the head and, the, and then the eyes thrown on. I think when it looks like this, it looks a bit weird, especially with those eyelashes. I mean, don't get me wrong, Glitchtrap is rocking some mighty fine eyelashes. I'm a little jealous, but the spiky eyelashes just look a little bit weird on the plain uh, yellow background of his head. But other than that, Fantastic detailing on this guy. You can see the stitches on his legs to his actual torso, the details on his suit. You can see the stars on there. He even gave him some buck teeth. Yeah, overall just a- he's got a bunny tail! Look at that, look at how cute that is. This guy's great. Would you look at that? So you can actually take off uh, the stand. And look at that, he stands perfectly, but just in case maybe you have a wobbly surface, yeah. There you go, so that's why they include the stands. But overall, a really, really nice figure, I'd say. Besides just some tiny little nitpicks, besides that, fantastic figure. And that is the entire U2's Help Wanted Figures wave. Again, I am missing the pin set. I thought I ordered it. I probably didn't, and I'm just misremembering that. But it looks fantastic. Overall, I'd say this is a very, very solid U2's wave. I really think that this wave, this Help Wanted wave at the end of 2023 really showed like a turning point with U2s. It seems like 2023, they really upped their game with Ruin, with, uh, you know, the Help Wanted wave. And now with 2024, they've just, I mean, blown past that. And they're really blowing through all my expectations. The Withered wave that just released earlier this year is fantastic. The FNAF movie wave was also fantastic. We're getting a second movie wave. So I can only just imagine how amazing that's going to be. It really does seem like U2s is dominating the FNAF merchandise scene right now. I truly do believe they are releasing some of the most high quality stuff we've seen in years at this point, honestly. I really do think they've upped their game recently and I just cannot wait to see what else they have planned. So again, stay tuned because very soon we're going to be reviewing the Ruin figures that I also just got in. And once again, if you want to see a review on the U2's Ruin plushies, that's up on my second channel right now. So thank you all so much for watching this video and I'll see you all on the flip side. Goodbye.